You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here with none other than Christian Larson from the band Manticora. Their new album, To Live, To Kill, To Live, comes out on August 28th. It's a follow-up to their last album, To Kill, To Live, To Kill. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, Christian, and welcome to The Pit. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. So what have you been listening to lately? Besides Manticora, <laughs> uh, well, I've been listening a lot to the, the recent Tool album, actually. Uh, but at the moment, I'm not listening to music. You know, when when it's been a long journey, it's there's a lot of music going on. So, so I'm a bit tired in my ears, actually. <laughs> well, and of course, you want to focus on creating your own music. Do you kind of take time to kind of like not listen to other bands and just kind of focus on your own music when you go into the studio? Yeah. Actually, when when I'm creating music, I, I don't listen to anything else than Manticora because I'm like in the zone when I, I'm creative and uh, doing music. And uh, it's actually pretty hard to, to be on the other side. When everything is finished, there's suddenly silent inside my head and now i just need to figure out well what did the others do while i've been away so i'm actually catching up i have no idea what's been good or bad new bands old bands i have no idea really i've just been away for many years (laughs) (laughs) so what can you tell us about the concept of the album the concept of the album is actually it's three stories. It's a story about a hitman <clears throat> doing his deeds in a basement, um, and uh, it's about uh, a Japanese sword called uh, a katana, uh, and then it's about uh, how the it's actually how the hitman is catching his victims and the other story is how the, the hitman is finishing them off and then we have this uh, sword, the katana and those three stories are uh, like connected in a way because um, this, this Japanese katana sword is cursed and it demands blood. So everyone who's owning it uh, will end up finding some kind of horror uh, with it. So, so it's, it's a bit difficult to, to explain. One has to read the book to understand. That's right. So this is based on a book uh, kind of similar to how you guys did uh, Hyperion. Uh, so can you tell us yeah. a little bit about the book? Yeah, well, the book is, as I said earlier, uh, it's the book, uh, both albums are uh, are covering this book, and uh, the book is really evolving uh, around a lot of things, and uh, we we are in present time following this hitman, Uh, we are in uh, past time, uh, in in the year 1200 in, in Korea and Japan, uh, and, and we follow this sword, and actually, um, this sword is the most important thing of the of the story because, uh, of course, this hitman is the owner of the sword. So so everything is is connected like this. But but you actually follow this hitman, and you follow his uh, his deeds, and you follow how he catches these uh, persons but also you follow why the, the other side of the story is why do one need to hire a hitman and those stories are in this book as well so so um, so there's a lot of things going on in a very short book it's only 300 pages but but the stories are sad they are horrific um, they are intelligent, uh, but it's not a children's book. So that would be a short answer to, to your question. <laughs> Is there any reason you think that you guys have uh, chosen literature as a source of influence? Actually, I we all agreed upon years ago that, that we need the 
third dimension in creating music because uh, doing a song where you sing that that you hate this and she hates that and I'm sad and you're angry and uh, it, it just makes no sense in Man's Core at all. We need the third dimension where, and the third dimension will always be the story because it just gives so much more to the song because suddenly if, if you read the book and you hear the music and you hear the lyrics coming out from, from Lars, then everything just gives more sense. And that's what we are trying to do. It's like we, we, we want to not just create a song that you sit in your car listening to on your way to work or something. You need to get involved in this story because the bonus is that every song is that more energetic. I don't know if that makes any sense, but, but that's actually what we're trying to do. It makes sense to me because maybe because I'm a progressive metal fan or something like that. But I see what you're saying about having that third dimension. But when you guys set out to make this album uh, with To Kill, To Live, To Kill, I'm sure you guys didn't realize that making the follow-up To Live, To Kill, To Live would, would be made during the middle of a global pandemic. So how, how has COVID, has it at, at all affected your vision of what the second album would, would have been? No, because all songs were made at the same time. Uh, both albums were done. Uh, when we entered the studio to make the first one, To Kill, To Live, To Kill, we already had the songs for the next album. Right. What COVID did was actually it gave us more time and, and we had to rearrange a lot of things. There were a lot of studios, sessions that we needed to cancel <clears throat> and there were a lot of rehearsals we, need to, we needed to cancel. So we actually just rearranged a lot of things. Actually, the, the biggest thing was that, okay, I have a small studio in my basement at home. So I just bought some professional gear. And then I said to Lars, you're going to record all vocals uh, in my basement. You're not going to Jacob Hansen or Tommy Hansen and doing it in a studio because now we actually have uh, the time to do it properly. Uh, the thing is that Lars has always had only like three or four days to do uh, whole albums and uh, now he had three or four months so his vocals uh, are way better on, on the new album than previous ones because we had time uh, so it there's there's two sides of the coin uh, the COVID is really bad because a lot of things happened but for us, it actually just gave us more time to to do it perfect. And you can really hear the difference on the vocals. I mean, it must have been hard for him to always kind of get pushed into the last couple of days of recording and now to finally take time and really kind of like do it at his own pace. Was that exciting for you guys to keep hearing all like the the samples coming in going wow this is sounding great yeah it, it, it was a huge impact i mean the first session was like uh, when he entered uh, my tiny studio and we started to to make the first vocal lines uh, all i could already hear now that this is going to be really great because i could stop him and say okay Lars. It's not going to be today because um, uh, your voice is not there. And he said, yeah, I agree. Let's do it tomorrow. And then we had other nights where he had, um, he had the voice for it. And then and we had like four or five hours when he was just doing vocals. And then we, we just ended and said, okay, that's good. This is really great. And at that moment, we realized that this is going to be perfect on the vocals this time because we have the time to say stop, not today. And then we have the time to just keep going because you're in the zone, just keep going. And then we'll meet up in a week or so when your voice is back. Uh, so we, we knew there that this is going to be a way different vocal um, what do you call it, a vocal... Um, experience. Exactly, experience, <laughs> vocal experience, yeah. Uh, 
So with this album, you guys opened it up with a 15 minute track. Was that even a thought to you guys? Because this far into your career, people know what to kind of expect from, I mean, not that we always know what to expect. You guys always surprise us, but doing a 15 minute opening track, did, did you even cross your guys' mind? Like, oh yeah, we shouldn't do that. And it's like, no, we're Manticora. We'll just do what we want. <laughs> you actually hit it right on the nail on, on the last thing, because there are two things in this, uh, actually, um, the storyline is, is very, uh, long in the book. And it's very complex and we needed to, to, to gather like th- two different stories in one song. That's the first thing. The second thing is that ideas just kept coming to this song. And actually this song was like uh, almost 20 minutes long before we started to cut it off. Uh, and um, and when, when it was like done, as, as the 15 minutes on the record today, we looked at each other and said, is this going to be too much to handle? And we actually said this, no, we're Manticora. We're, we're going to do this no matter what. So uh, we don't care, really. <laughs> I, I think your fans aren't going to be at all miffed about it either. <laughs> but at some way, you guys have learned to balance. How do you know when you're doing too much? I don't know. It actually comes to us when we when we have our listening sessions. We we have some sessions where we we leave our instruments in the corner, sit down, and just listen to every passage. And uh, sometimes we hit we hit the stop button and say, "This is too much." And that's actually what happened to a lot of songs on this, that there are a few more songs that were way longer, um, who also got the knife actually and <laughs> said, this is too long. We, sometimes we just sit down and listen to a track and it's like, this is, this is turning as a, it's going to be annoying to keep hearing this, or this vocal line is too long. This passage me gives me nothing. It makes no sense. This is too long, and those listening sessions actually makes the final cut, so to speak. And uh, we are very harsh on our own songs. It's like, okay, you're fired. Out with this piece. This piece is fired as well. Delete. And um, well, we just create and erase and improve, actually. <laughs> Right, it's a process of refinement that you guys have been... Yeah, exactly. So, uh, with the music video you guys made for uh, Eaten by the Beasts, you were involved in the storyboarding and all these different processes in the music video. Was that something that you guys had wanted to do for a long time? Yeah, definitely. Um, This video has been thought of uh, for years, and we had the storyboard ready. And it was a matter of details, uh, but but everything was planned and it worked. It turned out exactly as we wanted it. There are a few things in the video that that should have been more of, and that was uh, on one on the location uh, on the farm location. With the pigs. We had a deal that, that that we were going to have a lot of film of the pigs. But uh, when we turned up with the video crew and uh, everything, they, they said uh, the female pig just had tiny pigs. So uh, it's not going to happen. And we were like, what? Because this is actually a really important step. So anyway, we, we shot the video uh, and we took all all the scenes we could from the farm and then then we just filmed and found some other pig related scenes uh, but uh, well there, there are a few scenes I would have loved to see on, on that video that that is just left out now and going into the future do you think you guys are gonna keep trying to be more involved in the music videos 
was actually harder than I thought it would be. I mean, writing the storybook was hard because uh, it's almost like you have to think in every frame. Right. Uh, and another thing is that, um, well, doing videos, it's like I'm a musician and I can close my eyes and when I hear a special tone, uh, uh, a whole scenery just unfolds. When uh, things just when things become real in pictures, as in videos, I turn uh, almost blind. So, so I'm I'm not that creative on the, on the imaging and, and and doing videos. So, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe we maybe we'll do more videos, uh, but I'm not sure. Actually, it was it was harder than I, I expected it to be. But you're glad that you went through the process? Definitely, definitely. And I, I really, really enjoyed the outcome of the video, um, even though there are a few scenes cut out. But, but uh, the final result is perfect. What advice would you give to anyone who's chasing their dreams? Uh, well, first off, um, don't do this for the money. It's not the 80s or the 90s anymore. If you, if you want to do metal or hard rock, you need to do it because you really love it. Because uh, the moment it becomes work for you or it becomes stressed up and your private life becomes affected by it, just stop right there because you're not going anywhere with that. The music business is so tough and it's really, really hard and you need to put in a lot of energy in it. So that's the first advice. The other advice is be yourself and stand out from the others. If, if you are just doing whatever the others are doing, uh, nobody cares. And uh, <clears throat> in my opinion, I hear a lot of different music uh, coming out, new stuff, and, and some of them just sound like all the others. I mean, it's like it's, it's like a factory just producing the same things uh, with a different cover. Uh, I'm a bit harsh now, but, but it really it matters to me that if you're going to be a musician, then stand out and be yourself and put your energy into the fact of, of standing out uh, instead of just being like everyone else. That's great. That's great advice. Uh, I, is there anything else that you'd like to say to our listeners? Well, um, this is actually uh, the first time that Manticora uh, produces a vinyl and uh it's a big thing for us, and uh, it's it's a double vinyl with um, three uh, vinyls in it, and uh, it just looks amazing because um, in this process with the book and the albums, we had an artist called David doing all the pictures uh, corresponding to every story in the book and on the albums, and it's all there in this uh, uh, vinyl format and it's uh, it's really a huge thing for us I mean we are really proud that it's uh, succeeded especially because we, we do everything ourselves we did not print the vinyls but we we've done all the artwork ourselves and uh, put everything together so so uh, you should check that out and uh, support us by buying one of those there are only 200 of each so uh, and they they're running fast at the moment so uh, check it out definitely I, I know there's a lot of audiophiles out there around penticton who like to listen to vinyl so uh, all you guys listening check it out manticora has vinyl uh, yeah, exactly You've been listening to The Peach Pit. I've been here with Christian Larson from the band Manticora. Their new album, To Live, To Kill, To Live, comes out on August 28th, so definitely check it out. 
Christian, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me. And I hope that once all this stuff is over, you guys can get over to Canada, come out to Penticton and play a show here because I know that there's a lot of people here that would show up to that show and be a big, big audience for you. Thank you. I would love to come, definitely. Great. Thanks a lot and take care of yourself, okay? Thank you. Bye. Bye now.